Great. This we'll conference will now party. be recorded. Okay. <clears throat> All right, everybody, uh, welcome to the September 9th uh, meeting of uh, Focus Vivian Road. Uh, again, my name is Dave Mecklenburg. I'm chair of the committee. Uh, first uh, item on the agenda is approval of the minutes of our August 12th meeting. If, uh, I know a copy of the minutes were sent out to everybody. If they've had an opportunity to review them, I would entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second, Richard. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to approve the minutes of uh, August 12th. All those in favor indicate by saying aye, either with a wave or a, a positive statement. Aye. aye. Positive statement. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing no opposition, minutes are approved. Okay. Um, and do we know everybody who's online, callers and everybody, have they all been properly identified? I, I was muted, I'm sorry. I. The only ones I don't know are the three people that have called in, but I think it's um, one of those is Dave King, but I'm not sure about the other two. Marge Finley is one. Yep, Marge, that's and this, right. And Diana Radovich had to call in. Okay, now. That's it. All right. Okay. okay. All right, that's it. All right. Uh, First item on the agenda is update from uh, Shoal Creek Police Division. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Rick Jones, I'm the evening hours uh, community interaction officer from Shoal Creek. Um, I'll go ahead and start off like I normally do with the uh, uh, crime stats as soon as my email indicator what's going off. Uh, okay, uh, I'll just start off with a couple of aggravated assaults we had on the corridor. Uh, the first one was in the 4900 block of North Antioch. Uh, over there by Big Lots uh, on the night of uh, August 26th. It was an aggravated assault. Um, suspects were seen in a dark uh, charger. Passenger was hanging out the window with the AR-15 and um, ended up uh, basically ended up being a drive-by shooting. Uh, looks like the victim was an, was the intended target. Um, he was not seriously hurt. Uh, he the victim was very uncooperative at the scene and has been more so ever since. He, he uh, insisted on being transported to an area hospital by a private conveyance. Um, we've got we've um, gotten a few hits on on the uh, suspect vehicle uh, at other locations as well. It is still being investigated. And then a second one was um, 5200 block of Antioch on the 15th. Um, it's kind of a sad story, really. Um, the um, the victim was. Um, was an autistic uh, young lady. Um, she wasn't wearing she wasn't wearing her mask in one of the businesses because of the um, because of the mask and the anxiety that it could cause. Um, someone confronted her about it, and during part part of her therapy has been to um, explain to people the autism and um, how it affects her. And the person that she tried to explain it to got in their car and uh, tried to run her over. Basically, uh, very sad. We uh, but she. Got, she got a couple of good pictures of the license plate, and uh, it is being investigated. I think, um, as of the last one, I think we got the suspect identified. So, um, just it's, you know, hope. Um, it sounds like the victim is going to be cooperative on that. So, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, I don't even know how to. That, I. Very sad, um, but fortunately, she was not. She wasn't hurt, and that's the important thing. Um, let's see. I'm going to go into um, let's see our our property crimes. Are well, we had a few non non aggravated assaults. Uh, basically, it's a uh, you know simple assaults. People know each other. You know, summertime alcohol gets involved, and nobody was seriously hurt on any of those. Nothing and nothing random. Um, 
We had a pocket of a not or a business burglaries in the uh, area of Vivian and North Oak, going from uh, about the middle of August into about the first week of of September. Uh, just the way the pockets concentrated, I think it's uh, probably uh, going to be related to our transients. Um, I didn't have much time. I didn't have much of an opportunity to look into those to see if any suspects had been identified yet. The one thing I do want to hit on is our stealing our uh, theft from autos and our stolen autos. Uh, those are pretty steady. However, though, what we're seeing is we're seeing pockets of those have uh, occurring over at the uh, Planet Fitness. Uh, that's uh, during the um, during the peak hours when you would expect to see people out there, you know, um, in the mornings before work or in the evenings right after work. And it looks like it's just crimes of opportunity. People are leaving cars unlocked. People are leaving valuables out in the open. Uh, the stolen um, also had a couple stolen stolen autos out of there as well. I think one of them was an attempt at stolen auto. But it's it's just a deal where people are leaving them. Um, you know, the crimes of opportunity are there, and people are taking advantage of them. Uh, let's see. Other than that, we're not Officer really Jones? seeing any any other real issues. Go ahead. I have a question. This is Ed. Um, have we had a conversation with Planet Fitness about maybe putting up some um, signs or something to say, please lock your car, please um, make sure your uh, you know things of value are not seen from walking by the car. We've had those conversations, and they're and they and they are doing that. Every, every time I've gone out okay. there to talk to them, the signs are already there. It's just, I mean, just as bus as busy as as Planet Fitness is, and the volume of people that are coming and going throughout the day. It's, uh, I mean, I I don't I, I I don't know why the Planet Fitnesses out of all the other type of uh, workout facilities are you know more of a target as opposed to some of the other ones, except for the fact that you know they they seem to have the most volume and turnaround throughout the day. I'm just wondering if it's so open and easy to get in and get out. Um, we're like the world's gym down the street only has one entrance in and out. Um, just something to think about. Yeah. I mean, it's a, uh... I mean, when you go when you go through there, it's just like when you look just something that I'm noticing, just the way the parking spaces are set up in regards to the the layout of the of the, uh, of the street. Um, it really does create a little bit of a just the way the parking lot set up. It does create an area of concealment to where, you know, somebody, you know, somebody could very easily, you know, walk through there. And if they if they saw something that they they wanted, they wanted to get it, could they could get they could uh, get in there pretty easily just, you know, and. You know, could kind of, almost kind of blend in just, but you know, even with the traffic there, it's. Uh, I mean, that might be something to um, approach uh, Planet Fitness about, and maybe ask them, hey, when you guys do it, if and when you guys get around to doing another, um, you know, um, um, resurfacing of the parking lot and a restrike, maybe uh, consider uh, looking at uh, alternate uh, parking patterns, perhaps. Okay. Is Are anybody there any other comments or questions? Anything Rick? else to add, Rich? This is Marty. Hey, Marty. I was just curious, how much of that property or those cars do people ever get back? Or do they end up down in those uh <laughs> You know, Marty, I, I really I really don't know. I mean a lot of times it's um I mean, a lot of a lot of the items that you know are taken, like uh, let's say out of out of a purse or something like that. It's um, it's one of those deals where, you know, somebody might take what they want out of the purse. A lot of times, what we find it's credit cards, um, or you know, maybe even some documents if someone's looking to do some identity theft. Usually, a lot of those uh, once the you know once once somebody's gotten what they want, they they'll usually dump it in a trash can somewhere or something like that. So it's never you know it's it's I, I don't it's it's hard to, it's hard to say. Um, just on the surface, how much, how many times the property is recovered? Okay. Anything else, Rich? Okay. Thank you very much for the update. Uh, let's all uh, be mindful of what we can do as individuals to keep an eye on things and. Uh, 
remind everybody to uh, lock their cars and not have any valuables visible uh, as we go forward. Uh, next item on the agenda, presentation by Richard Allen, Kansas City, Missouri Parks. Richard. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Eli, are you able to um, show that power or the PDF that I sent over to Ed? Yeah, I'll pull that up right now. Um, just so you know, let me know whenever you want me to change the page. It may take a couple of seconds for it to show up on the shared screen, but um, I can I can do that for you. And then for everyone else who's watching, you may notice that there are a number of video windows up at the top of the GoToMeeting window. You can make those smaller so that the shared screen is a little bigger in your view by clicking the gray line that's between the shared screen and the video windows at the top, and then just dragging that window up, or, or that line up, my apologies. So. Uh, Richard, you're good to go whenever. Okay. Um, so this is exactly what it looks like outside right now. Nice sunny day. Um, so no, today we're just going to kind of update uh, the group on uh, some progress with trails uh, kind of close to the Vivian corridor. I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I see you online, Miss Gorman, so it's always Always good to see you. Advance uh, to the next slide. Uh, th this slide is uh, a slide that we've used uh, um, when we've gone after grant funding, uh, showing the, the trail network up north. And on this uh, map, um, there's some little check marks that are shown throughout the map. And so today I'm going to talk about six trails, uh, um, kind of up in the north, um, the top of the page off to the right. Uh, 435 is that dark black line that goes along the right side. Uh, the black line at the top of the page, that's uh, 152. And then uh, kind of the dark black line that's in the middle of this map is 169. But I'm uh, going to talk about the Hodge Park Trail, um, talk about the Briarcliff Trail, uh, the Big Shoal, um, also Searcy Creek, um, and then the North Truce Trail. And then um, the last one would be the Shoto Trail at I-35. So. If you could advance the slide, please. Uh, the, the first slide just shows Hodge Park. Hodge Park is uh, one of the largest parks uh, north of the river in the park system. And uh, what we have here is uh, we have a, about a two mile long trail that goes from Shoal Creek Parkway, which is essentially north, you know, east 96th Street down to uh, 152. And so um, this would eventually be the uh, the Smithville Connector Trail uh, up to Smithville Lake. And so um, just a little history on this. It's um, back uh, probably about 10 years ago, we um, partnered with, um, um, you know, Clay County Parks on the, the on a grant to build a trail within Hodge Park, uh, Clay County's uh, park crews actually built a lot of the trail. The trail was a gravel trail. Uh, we received uh, recreational trail funding for that project, and then uh, we put in a um, you know a prefabricated bridge across the Shoal Creek, which is at the north part of the park. Um, kind of fast forward to just like 2017, we received TIF funding uh, for from the Shoal Creek TIF, and that allowed us to change that gravel trail into a concrete trail. Um, also allowed us to uh, provide some uh, open space areas for rugby, football, and other play, uh, destination playground, a shelter. And so um, 
this um, and what's important about this is uh, you know it gives you know people access into the park uh, that lives along Shoal Creek uh, at the south end of Hodge Park and then eventually uh, the plan is to get a grade separated crossing under 152 and so um, just kind of wanted to highlight that picture. So if you advance the slide, please. Uh, th this is just uh, some photos of the of the trail that uh, was recently done at Hodge Park. And so um, what we've been doing is we've been going 10 foot wide, uh, six inch thick reinforced concrete trail. Uh, the reason why we do that is uh, uh, the deferred or the life cycle cost of the trail is a lot longer than um, if we do asphalt. Um, and then when you see this, you say, well, you do do some asphalt trails. Sometimes it makes sense to do asphalt trails, but uh, for the most part, we try to do the 10 foot wide, six inch thick concrete trails. And so uh, the slide on the left uh, shows you um, kind of the trail as it goes through part of the wooded area between the golf course and the north part of the park. And then uh, the slide on the right shows, uh, um, you know, the rugby field in the multi-purpose fields during grading, but uh, those are all grassed in. Uh, if you get a chance, go up to Hodge Park, it, it looks great. Uh, next slide. Uh, this this project is the North Truce Trail, and then um, I just want to touch on the importance of the trail. It, it connects uh, Inglewood Park uh, to residents along North Truce. Uh, also, it'll eventually um, tie into uh, the Vivian Trail that's on the south end of the park, uh, the Gorman Pool. It'll provide residents a way to access the pool, uh, you know, for the people that live um, that live between um, uh, Inglewood Road and then Vivian Road. And so uh, the, the trail is about a mile in length. Uh, the, the purple section is the part that's through Inglewood Park. And then the red section is pretty much from the park down to uh, Northeast uh, 49th Street. That has all been completed. The blue section we recently bid out. Um, uh, bids came in July 15th and then uh, we're entering into an, a contract with a contractor uh, to complete that last piece. The last piece uh, will tie into where the trail ends um, by the church and then it'll tie into the trail that's along Vivian. And then there will be a crosswalk that is across Vivian. There is a, a median that's in the middle of Vivian that provides a little bit of refuge if somebody's cutting across, you know, Vivian where they could rest before they move all the way across. And then there will be a solar panel uh, flashing beacon um, uh, pedestrian singles on the north side and south side of Vivian Road. So again, it's about a mile, a little over a mile in length. Uh, and um, and then again, the, the main purpose is this, is to connect Inglewood Park to the trail for residents along North Truce. And if you ever walked along North Truce before the trail was in place, uh, it was a very scary walk. So this provides uh, safe access and a place for people to recreate. And I always see people walking their dog along there. So advance to the next slide, please. Um, this, this slide here just shows the completed trail, uh, shows um, the 10 foot wide trail, but it shows how we, um, you know, kind of mitigated you know the overall effect of being in a wooded area is uh you know we we saved uh, a lot of the trees but we did remove a lot of the understory and the understory you can see to the right is what it looked like but 
uh, we removed a lot of the understory and so there's good um, sight lines as people are walking along the trail so uh, they can see you know both sides of them and then um, you can look out to North Troost and see North Troost and then people driving along North Troost can look back and then look into the trail and see people walking so um, when we do these trails it's very important that uh, we have nice sight lines you know uh, up and down the trail and then um, to the sides of the trail so uh, so this section of trail that we just bit out will be done um, in the spring and then uh, the north church trail will be complete so uh, next slide please Uh, Searcy Creek Trail. Um, I'll just start off by saying that um, um, West Mender, you know, uh, you, you know, was in the public works and then moved over in the city manager's office, and then uh, he recently accepted, you know, a position with a private company. But West did a great job of uh, uh, thinking about trail alignments and how they connect and then um, you know going after grants uh, for these trail alignments and so um, uh, so if you're wondering kind of where did some of those trails end up uh, some of them most of them stayed with public works and then uh, ben mccabe with public works has taken over some of those projects and then i see mario on the call mario's ended up with some of those as well but um, the ones that were kind of within our park open spaces, uh, we've kind of taken on, you know, the ownership of those. And so um, uh, the Searcy Creek Trail, it's, uh, you know, pretty much along the Searcy Creek Greenway. Um, um, a lot of Greenway was acquired. Um, uh, many years ago for building future parkways and boulevards and uh, you know that's what a lot of Searcy Creek was uh, um, you know purchased for and so um, we recently completed a master plan of the Searcy Creek Greenway um, looking at it as a linear park concept that uh, provided uh, some recreational pocket areas along Searcy Creek and then also developing uh, the trail. And so um, this trail is, uh, section is between uh, Parvin and then I wanna say it's like Northeast 46th or 48th, but um, it's a little bit, you know, about a mile in length. Uh, it connects to the school up in that area. And then um, if you go back to, you know, that original map, it don't, don't go back to it right now, but uh, this trail will uh, tie into the Show Creek Smithville Trail that uh, will take you up towards uh, Smithville Lake and Hodge Park. And then, um, and so this is, um, and then uh, eventually has the opportunity to go down to the river. And so uh, we have received some, uh, uh, TAP funding. TAP funding is uh, just transportation alternative programming money. Um, and that's administered through MoDOT. And then uh, Mid-America Regional Council is the one that usually does the call on these grants. And so uh, we've received funding uh, for this project. Um, like I said, Wes, you know, was able to uh, submit an application to get funding for this. And then uh, Council District 1 is um, going to help fund you know portions of this trail but this project is currently underfunded and so um, um, additional funds will need to come into place in order to build this section but um, i really don't know the shortfall of funding right at this point but um, i can find that out so next slide please Uh, th th this again, it's uh, uh, this is an example of uh, government working really well. I mean, it's uh, uh, this was a project where uh, we worked with the water department, public works, and then city manager's office, and um, 
this is uh, developing a trail between Shoto and Brighton along the Big Shoal Greenway. And um, you ask, well, why does this government work in it? Um, well, Water Services has done a lot of water main replacements and they had replaced a lot of the main along uh, Vivian, which disrupted you know, a lot of travel, tore a pavement, and made it very difficult to maneuver. But uh, you know, water, public works, parks, we all worked together. And then they were able to uh, install the water main along the Big Shoal Greenway. And then they were able to do a lot of the tree clearing. And then um, after they got done with the tree clearing, um, um, Wes, you know, did a lot of the design for this trail, and so uh, we bid the trail out through parks, and so this project is under construction now. Um, what does this trail do? Uh, this trail connects from Shoto, so, you know, you have the Shoto Trail that eventually goes all the way down to the river along Shoto. And so there, there is a gap between Vivian and uh, I-35 that we you know, need to fill, but um, we're able to have the, the, you know, the trail along the Lakewood uh, Greenway area. So that eventually, that does get you down to I-35, but you know, this section of trail is a little over two miles in length. Uh, it connects a lot of residential areas to the Greenway. Uh, the project is in construction right now, and this work will be done early next year. Um, also, um, through this project, uh, the the athletic fields are, you know, where we had uh, the two baseball fields at Indiana and a small parking lot area. Uh, the parking lot area gets improved, and also a soccer field or multi-purpose field gets graded in as well under that project. Uh, this project was funded through uh, Council District 1. Uh, it was funded through uh, TAP dollars and then also uh, it received some Antioch, Antioch TIF funding. So um, so uh, it's a good mix of, of dollars and then um, you know this project should be all wrapped up uh, next year. Uh, next slide please. Um, this one is the Briarcliff Greenway Trail. Uh, again, this is a linear park concept. Um, uh, this project, it's um, um, a few years back, uh, we um, added uh, trail uh, to the school, and then we added uh, first phase of trail work that connected uh, Northeast 40th to uh, Briarcliff Elementary School. Briarcliff, th this area is pretty much uh, west of North Oak, and it is um, east of uh, Briarcliff Parkway and 169. And so, um, uh, th this project, it's um, you know, it's the development of a of a walkway through the Briarcliff Greenway. Um, you know, at the south end of the Greenway is Waterworks Park. Uh, Waterworks Park has uh, received um, a lot of improvements, um, you know, in recent years. Uh, we've put in a nice shelter that's lighted. Um, we put in a walking trail within Waterworks Park and then um, Public Works uh, improvements along North Oak. That project turned out great where you have a walking trail on one side and sidewalk on the other. Uh, through their project, they were able to provide access into Waterworks Park, um, kind of on the south end of Waterworks Park. And then another exciting project for Waterworks Park is uh, the development of the Workers Memorial uh, sculpture. Um, that will be, that's being planned for the parking lot at Waterworks Park. Um, that is kind of the overlook area that where you can see the downtown and um, I will say that that's probably the best view of the downtown is from that area but uh, there's a sculpture plan for Waterworks Park where it will honor um, 
um, workers that have lost their life uh, during you know construction projects and so uh, we've been working with the trade unions on the development of that sculpture so again Briarcliff Greenway um, this development of a, more of a nature trail a linear park concept connecting the neighborhood to the greenway and then also eventually providing access to waterworks park uh, next slide please Um, th th this is a project <laughs> that um, is that basically connects Penguin Park over to Shoto, and um, we appreciate all of the you know patience and concerns and and uh, questions that have come up along this project, but. Um, but right now we have a paved trail from Vivian, from Penguin Park, all the way down to Shoto. Um, we recently uh, just, um, you know, completed uh, changing over a, a portion of the aggregate trail to concrete. And then also um, we replaced some of the chain link fence with a decorative fence that kind of is, is more pleasing to the eye as you're coming off I-35 at Shoto. And so, uh, again, uh, this is a very important link. It connects, you know, uh, Penguin Park to Shoto and then all the, you know, walkways along Shoto. And then um, what's important about north of Vivian is it connects you to the Big Shoal Greenway. So um, this work is all wrapped up. And then I saw Dave and Marty on this call. Uh, we did receive some funding for a shelter. Um, kind of at the Lakewood Greenway, you know, entrance into the trail. And so uh, we'll probably be reaching out to the neighborhood to uh, run some designs for a shelter by the neighborhood and then also a location for that shelter. So uh, next slide. Um, uh, this is the Shoto I-35 project and then um, what this does, it, it provides a uh, pedestrian access under I-35 um, along Shoto. The pedestrian access will be on the west, I mean the east side is Shoto. And then um, also it's going to be, it's going to add a turn lane and some access, you know, uh, car lanes, you know, under the bridge. And so this is a project that, um, we were able to get uh, cost share uh, funding through MoDOT, and then um, and then also I believe you know that you know this does have some bond you know funding on it as well, and then um, so this project will bid out in the next couple months, and then this one. Uh, we'll bid out through Parks and Rec, but like I said, we, we have a great relationship with uh, MoDOT on this. Uh, what this does is, is it provides that missing link for the Shoto Trail under I-35. And so now, uh, you know, when this is all done, you know, somebody could, you know, that lives up along the Big Shoal area can walk along the Big Shoal to North Jackson, go from North Jackson down along the Lakewood Greenway area, go under I-35, connect up to Shoto, and then go all the way down to the Missouri River. And then they could also, you know, walk as they're walking the Missouri River, to the Missouri River, uh, they could see the Francois Shoto sculpture that is uh, uh, the first phase has been completed, you know, the the bluffs have been installed and then also, you know, the sculptures. So uh, th that's kind of highlighting, you know, a few of the trail projects that are along the Vivian corridor. And I hope that I was able to explain how they connect together. So uh, with that, uh, if you go to the next slide, it's just uh, if there's any questions or, or anything.
Are there any questions questions for Richard or any observations? Yeah, Richard, this is Dave King. Uh, do you have a completion date for the Truce Trail? Uh, for the Truce Trail, um, the contractor has until late spring to complete that. So um, we're getting ready to award that. And then um, so the contractor has 180 days to complete that work. And so um, that'll take them into late spring. So I'm saying by June of next year, that'll all be wrapped up. And I'm hoping it's done a lot sooner than that, Dave. Hey, we're we're uh, looking to try to get it open before pool season next next year the next pool season um if everything goes as planned it should be open by pool season and so Great. um so we uh have a question that came in from marty in the chat do you have plans funded for 46th Street to the current Lakewood Trail? Um, we, 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 I think there may be plans, but I don't think there's funding for that, Marty. So I, I think, you know, um, I'll, I'll have to check on that, but if I recall, there, there was a, I think that was part of our ongoing discussion with the neighborhood. So uh, maybe when we talk about the shelter at the park, we can talk about that as well. I think I Nita, heard also that, um, yeah, Nita was about to ask something. Anita, did you have any comments? I think they're doing a lot of work, and it was good news. And and um, I'm gonna I, I'm glad that uh, Anita is on our team because uh, uh, she put in a lot of the original requests for the funding for the North Truce Trail. So we appreciate that. Well, it's beautiful. You've done a wonderful job. The, uh, the comment I would make about this is that this is an area uh, that 65 years ago was promised uh, an awful lot uh, when we were first annexed and we're beginning to see something uh, in the way of progress uh, in that area. Uh, I know we still need sidewalks, gutters, and uh, some street lights in certain places and to get off of septics, but uh, as far as the quality of life portion of it, uh, we seem to be getting somewhere on it finally. And uh, I think uh, through the hard work of Anita and uh, the Parks Department and various uh, council people over the years, we're beginning to see some real progress. I'm looking forward to the continuing improvement of North Oak. Uh, north of where it has been improved and the trail on the east side of that, which really will connect to Waterworks Park, which will connect to Briarcliff and then eventually Vivian Road Trail and everything. So the future uh, looks very good. We just need to keep up the good work uh, over the next few years to continue this connectivity. Uh, very honestly, eight years ago, I didn't think we'd see this and I'm uh, very pleased that the, the uh, success we've had, but we have a long way to go. Uh, Richard, thank you very much for your presentation. Are there any further questions? Thank you for the opportunity. Have, have a good day. I'm gonna listen in, so. Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh, Ed, it looks like you're up for updates on Vivian Road businesses. Ed, on mute. I had to unmute, but uh, I didn't know if uh, Mario would be on the call, but maybe he could add a little. Um, but I wanted to share with everybody that um, the building or that office complex next to the mailbox or the ma post office looks like uh, Dave King shared with me, and I've met with the owner of that building. It looks like he's really starting to try to do this uh, rehab of that building um, and trying to get it done so that he can get 
some offices and maybe even a coffee shop was what he shared with me. Um, Dave said that, um, and Dave, you're welcome to chime in, but uh, looks like they're starting to tear up the concrete uh, along the uh, building and starting to look at uh, getting that fixed. There was some issues with its slope. Water was getting into the building, and so he's trying to address all of that. Um, I think um, it's going to be a slow process, but if you see him out there, stop and tell him thank you. I think he's doing a good job, um, and he wants to have something we all can be proud of. Um, it, it is in bad shape, so he's really working hard to get those things uh, moving forward. The other item I wanted to share, I sent out an email last week about uh, Tidal Wave being open. How many of you guys have, have gone and gotten your car washed? I think it's an amazing um, experience, and uh, I think they're really trying to be a part of the Northland. Um, I know the there will be a sales tax off of that that will support the TIF, uh, which supports our efforts to do rehab and minor home repair in the Northland. So um, really would encourage everybody to try try it out and see what they think. Um, but I think that's something exciting, seeing another building coming in um, with COVID and everything else. It's kind of exciting to see somebody invest that kind of money into a project and see it all the way through. Um, and to see another good business along Vivian Road, I think is wonderful. So um, any comments, I'd be open. Barr, if you've got anything to share with us about uh, the work we're doing on the streetscape, I'd love to have an update. Yeah, thanks, Ed. We are uh, kind of working on different fronts. We just, I think the last, 10 days from the last five days, we got comments back from ODOT on the preliminary designs that we've shared with you. Uh, so we're still kind of working through those. Uh, we also had a very productive discussion uh, about the corner of Antioch, no, it's Kyoto and Vivian, the northeast corner. Uh, we're just waiting, waiting on Dave to see uh, whether some of the ideas that we presented to him would be acceptable. But if that were to work out, I think we can come up with a dramatic change in the intersection that will really improve the, the pedestrian friendliness and the overall uh, aesthetics of the intersection. Um, of course, there's always the issue of, of uh, funding for the project. Uh, we do have a little bit of news to report in that there is a commitment to provide some of the local match uh, through general obligation bonds in the upcoming year. Uh, we'll still have a little bit of a gap. Um, we'll be working with council members uh, to, to fill that gap and, and see what other things, what other mechanisms that might be out there to continue to run out funding for the project. So that's really all I have. Mario, what's the timeline on getting the funding in place? What do we need to do in order to continue moving along our timeline as it's been designed? Well, I think we, uh, we need to continue to uh, either, uh, I, I think if, if we can have a, a, our deadline, I guess I would say we need to have money in hand ready to spend by 2022. So if we can just lobby and make the, to have appropriations done by that time, I think I, you know that would work. I think in the upcoming budget year, you will see a proposal for general obligation bonds put, forward, uh, put forth for uh, Vivian Road. But I think it's a, an annual, it's a year by year situation, right? To make sure that, that there's continued attention paid for this project. Overall, you know, uh, tag price is, is close to $6 million. So uh, we're almost there. I think we're $600,000 short, $670,000 short of our, of our goal. So. Okay, so a couple of things that I wanna share that Mario didn't and he can tell me I shouldn't have, but uh, one of the things that I think is kind of exciting is he's fought very hard with his department to put Vivian Road as one of the top projects to focus on. And so I think that's uh, wonderful to hear that, you know, his department has agreed with him on that. So that's, that helps us with maybe pursuing go bonds. Is that right, Mario? That's correct. But also the city manager, um, I, I believe has made a, a, some, there's been conversation with the city manager and uh, district one about the upcoming year and what, what gets put in the budget the upcoming year. 
to ensure that we have money in hand come 2022. Okay. Is there a role that we, we as a committee could work on um, with you to help move that to more fruition? I think, you know, continuous uh, um, advocacy uh, with uh, um, at all levels, right, including not just uh, council members, but, you know, the, the PIAC as a whole, uh, which is, you know, the PIAC makes final decisions and recommendations on, on their obligation fund expenditures. So, so a, a, a kind of a citywide advocacy effort would be uh, really appreciated uh, on the funding side. Um, I, I, that's that's about all I can think of right now. Maybe it'd be worthwhile having a meeting with uh, myself and and some of our committee members. Um, and Dave, if you're open to this, I was thinking maybe we have a meeting, talk about it, see what we can do, kind of like we did with the city manager, and sit down and talk about what our possibilities are to to reach that six hundred thousand. Um, it seems pretty exciting to be at this point um, looking for 600,000 instead of 7 million. And I think that's pretty exciting. So um, congratulations to everybody that's worked so hard, specifically Mario. He's done a yeoman's job of, of working on this. And I want to see if we can't make that reality. So uh, thank you, Mario. Yeah, I think we've, had, we've had very good support from um, District 1 all throughout um and i think they need to be acknowledged for some of the um advocacy and, and leadership that they're taking and making sure that we have an allocation of geo bonds in place um uh, come uh, april 1 of next year and i i personally think we need to really work on district two council people also because we got to remember the one thing about vivian road it is the only continuous road east and west from city limit on the west to city limit on the east that is other than a uh, state or a federal highway, a interstate or a state highway like 152. Uh, all other east-west arteries are broken up one place or another and are not continuous. The next closest thing would probably be Inglewood Road, but it only goes so far. But uh, I think this is uh, for future transportation uh, issues uh, that we need to really concentrate on the fact that it is the one and only continuous route east to west in, in the Northland uh, in Kansas City. So it becomes extremely important uh, that we not only talk to uh, of our first district help, but we also bring in for support, maybe not financial, but support uh, the second district for the importance of that connectivity. Mario, this is Richard Sales. At, at, at what point do we uh, have to have the funds in place before we lose any federal state money? Well, I, I think, um, I guess there's two, two answers to your question. One is, you know, if you tell me today, I mean, I think we need to have something in place by, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, end of this month, but it's not money, not, and I'm, I'm not talking about hard cash, I'm talking about you know, a commitment memo that says, hey, we'll do this uh, this year and then we'll do that next year and then maybe this in the, in the following year. I think we can, we can do with that, but, you know, money in hand, cash ready to spend, we need to have it by 2022. So we have time, you know, to, to program money over, to, over, over, over a period of years to make it happen. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier, I don't know if I mentioned before or not, but there is another source of funding out there that has actually grown from what it used to be. It used to be only $100,000 uh, per year, but it, right now, um, the, I think the next round is gonna be $250,000 per project, which is actually a big chunk, uh, a much bigger chunk than they used to do. So um, I'm fully prepared to pursue that when it comes available in January, but I, but I do need to have some sort of a commitment in hand um, by the end of this month and that way uh, but and again our, our efforts are still going to continue to try to raise other sources of money to, to make sure that we are fully fully funded on this project okay uh, i'm going to try to give you a call tomorrow maybe we can talk about what that that commitment needs to look like what it needs to say 
it would yeah, need to be absolutely. yeah I'll, I'll um i think you have my contact information and if not i'll, I'll send you an email with my phone number um, i've got it i've got it my my desk phone is forwarded to my cell phone so anybody that wants to call my desk you'll i will answer at all hours of the day so just uh, feel free to call me at any time okay very good thank you Dave, that's really all I have. Richard, if I can help in any way, please let me know. Um, we want to see this happen. And, and I think uh, it's because all of you on this call today um, are a part of this. I think that's part of what gives us that um, momentum. And so I appreciate everybody showing up for these meetings. I know we talk about some things over and over, but it's important that we continue this conversation on an ongoing basis so that we can respond when Mario needs us and all of us can be on board. So um, I really appreciate your time taking uh, this on and, and really beginning it. I was not here when we began this, but I certainly want to be here when we finish it. So I'm uh, pretty excited about it. So thank you, Dave. That's all my report. Okay, thank you. Uh, other business? Uh, I'll, I've got a couple yeah, items that I'll mention again. Uh, the uh, Spirit of Kansas City playbook. Uh, we need to keep uh, talking about that and getting people to put in their two cents on uh, the new uh, update of the focus uh, plan. Uh, and any the more information we can get out about that and input we can have, the better it'll be for the area which we primarily serve south of Vivian Road. Uh, the other item is uh, just released is a study done by Clay County for a new Clay County constitution. Uh, I think that's something that maybe maybe doesn't really affect uh, this particular committee, but probably does the planning and development committee of, of NNI. And I think we need to get a presentation uh, sometime for that uh, so we can become aware of what's being presented and uh, have input and ask any questions that might arise. I just got a copy of it today and got an opportunity to browse through it. Uh, I have some questions already, but uh, I think it's something that would serve us well uh, and the people we serve south of Vivian Road uh, to have some input into the future governance of our county. Dave, who would we invite to a meeting to talk about that? Who would you I recommend? I will know more about that tomorrow morning because a presentation is being made to the Legislative Affairs and Planning and Development Committees of the, North, of the Northland Regional Chamber of Commerce. So I will be able to get some uh, uh, information on who would make those types of presentations. Uh, and uh, I will give you that information probably after tomorrow. Thank you very much. I'll get that lined up. That sounds like a good thing to do. All right. Does anybody else have anything to uh, offer for the good of the uh, meeting? Yeah, Dave, the, uh, the Randy Rob space there that was Marcy's, there's some activity going on in that space again. I don't know what they're going to do, whether they're going to put in another restaurant or, or what they're getting ready to do, we probably should keep our eye on that. And the new car wars is exceptional. I ran both my cars through it over the weekend and or right after it opened. And uh, I think I think uh, my black car looks better than it did the, day it, uh, the day I bought it. It did a great <laughs> job. You guys ought to try it. One other question comes to mind. Uh, in the minutes of the last meeting, uh, Dave Horn had indicated that there was something pending on the old Sears building. Have we heard anything further on that? Dave, I have not heard from, from Dave Horn on that, um, but I will follow up and make sure I've got that for our next meeting. And in the event nobody's aware of it, uh, we're beginning the, the remodel of the uh, local uh, Burlington uh, for the future headquarters of Northland neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, I think that's uh, great news for us. Uh, kind of going back to where we were when I first got involved about 20 years ago. So uh, 
uh, kind of a home <laughs> television. Yeah. You aren't the only one. <laughs> right. Okay. If there's nothing further, thank you all very much. It's been a very good meeting, Mario. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Richard. Thank you very much for the reports. Uh, with that being said, uh, I will uh, adjourn the meeting and look forward to seeing you next month. October 14th. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you to everybody. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.